So, now uh, we looked at different examples of the ant pheromones. In this picture you can see in the first one uh, the ants are getting the food back. In the second one also uh, they have found a food source and they are getting the food. In the third one it is showing the aggressive behavior where two different ant species are fighting. It could be to guard their nest colony or to chase away the predator. So, here there is another interesting thing what you see in the ants which is called a slave raid. What do you mean by slave raid? Here there are two ant species. One is Polyergis lucidus, the other is Formica arcboldi. Now, this Polyergis lucidus will go to the Formica arcboldi colony and they will confuse the defenders of the Formica arcboldi. The Formica arcboldi has got a colony and this colony will be guarded by the uh, soldiers of the colony. So, the polyges will go to the colony, they will confuse the defenders, they enter the colony, they carry away the eggs young ones and bring them back to their own colony. Here once they hatch out and once they mature, they will be treated like slaves and they will have to work for this colony. This is called as slave raid. So, for this purpose they also release pheromone for the purpose of slave raid and the members of this colony will go to the other one and try to get the eggs and larvae and they will keep them as slaves. So, now in Formica subintegra they also secrete the recruit pheromone for the purpose of slave raid. They have got a gland called as dufus gland. The pheromone secreted by the dufus gland will confuse the workers which are trying to protect the colony and when they are confused they will carry away the larvae and the pupae. Some ant colonies they secrete uh, pheromones called as colony odors and this will help in recognizing its own members so that they all can stay within the colony. In another ant called as beaver ant here it can produce 30 different types of chemicals and they will be involved in different types of activities. Then you have another special gland called as Nasnov gland or Nasnow gland. This is found in the worker honeybee in the abdominal region and it secretes pheromone to recruit the workers. So, this is a picture of the slave raid where they are trying to pick up the members of the colony to its own colony. So, here you are seeing aggressive behavior in the ant uh, Iridomyrmex purpuris. You can see in the middle there is an ant which has lifted a leg. So, this kind of display where when one leg is lifted up means it is aggressive. She has encountered an ant from a different nest because of that she has become aggressive. She is in a mode of defending the colony. So, this picture shows the aggressive behavior and during this a pheromone is released telling that there is a threat because they found a member of another uh, species which has come near this colony. So, here this is another picture where you can see the eggs pupae and the larvae are carried from one colony you are seeing the uh, recruited ants which are carrying the young ones. So, with this we completed uh, the pheromones and their uh, role in insects, different types of glands and for what purpose the pheromones are released. So, basically either it is to locate the food or to defend the colony or to for the purpose of slave raid for recruiting and to chase away the predator. Now, we shall look at the pheromones in 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 vertebrates. If you look at the mammals, one important function what they do is the marking of the territory. 
which is called as the territorial pheromone and they will have special glands and sometimes the pheromones can be released along with the urine or the feces and when it is released it will mark the core area where the animal is living with the help of the territorial pheromone so that other uh, individuals will not be allowed to enter in its home range or the core area of the home range. If you look at the wild animals which live in the forest, for them identifying their home range when they go out in search of food or water, they have to come back to their place where they will rest. It is a difficult task because in wild it is very difficult to locate a region or locate the path. So what do they do? When they go out from the feeding and resting place, when they go out from the place where they rest and sleep, in the mornings they go out in the search of food, when they go out they will mark the path with the help of the pheromones. So a lot of studies were done to understand how this is happening. In hippopotamus, what it does when it goes out for uh, drinking water or for feeding, on the way it deposits the dung. When it is depositing the dung, it is moving the tail so the dung gets scattered to a larger area and thus mark the pathway. In rhinoceros, the feces is deposited on prominent landmarks like it could be a small stone or a small hill like structure, it will deposit dung on that so that from a long, uh, from a distance it can locate the dung and it can come back to its resting place. If you look at the male tiger, it releases the pheromone tigeramine which is a fluid which is milk like and generally secreted along with the urine and it is found out that it is chemically phenyl amine. So this again is used to mark the territory. Another interesting what you can see in the wild cat is it goes near a tree <coughs> then from the posterior side of its body it turns its uh, excretory organ and jets out urine with force onto the bark of a tree. By doing so, every day regularly it will urinate on the same spot. By doing so, it is marking its territory. In spotted hyena, what they do is, wherever they are resting that place, they will smear the grass with the pheromones released by the subcaudal scent glands and also the feces which is deposited on the stem of the grass. So with the help of the secretion of the scent gland and the feces they try to mark their territory. The loris what it does when it urinates it will catch the urine and it will sprinkle on the tree and hence marks the territory. Capuchin it will soak its feet and hand with urine, it will urinate, then it will wet its hand and feet in the urine and smear on the leaves of the tree to mark the territory. In lemurs, it will defecate, it takes the feces and smear it on the branches like as though it is painting the branches with the feces to mark the territory. In greater bush bay, when it is urinating, it will cup its hand then the urine is collected and rubbed on the trees to mark the territory. Bears will mark by chewing the bark. It will identify a tree, it will chew the bark. After chewing the bark, every day it will urinate on that spot. By doing so, it is marking its territory. So there are special glands in vertebrates for the purpose of secreting the pheromones. In monotremes or marsupials, they have special anal glands and the secretion of these glands are rubbed on the ground. In brown hyenas, they have got two anal glands, white and brown, 
the secretions of which will help in marking the territory male beaver has got anal gland to mark the territory opossum which is a marsupial again has got cloacal glands the bear dog and rat will secrete pheromones with the uh, along with the saliva uh, releasing uh, secreted from the salivary glands and released with the saliva another marsupial will chew the twig and then where it is chewn uh, the twig is uh, bitten there it will salivate to mark the territory hedgehog will salivate and scratch boar saliva has got steroids and this will induce mating so when they mate they stand and to induce this posture they secrete a uh, pheromone which is steroidal in nature the female rat will lick its nipple and it releases the pheromone which will attract the pups which are blind there are other glands which are there in studied in vertebrates like in roe deer the stag that is the horn of the roe deer will secrete pheromones to mark the territory it also has got metacarpal anal and glands on the forehead so it has got glands near the stag glands on the metacarpal region glands on the anus and the forehead which will help in marking the territory black buck and sambar have got special glands on the face region it will rub the facial glands on the tree to mark the territory red brocket or solitary deer has got glands at the base of the antlers that is the horns at the base they have got the glands which will release the pheromones to attract the females in elephants the bulls that is the male will have got glands on the temporal region secreting the pheromone to attract the female elephants musk deer has got the glands on the region of the stomach which secretes pheromone to attract the females humans also do produce pheromones but it is seen only during the ovulatory period so if you look at the menstrual cycle of the female ovulation will happen at around 14th day in a normal 28 day cycle so at that period the female will produce a pheromone to attract the male similarly the secretions of the vagina there is a chemical substance copalin and this copalin is secreted in huge quantities at the time of ovulation so that if there is coitus happening at the time of ovulation it becomes fruitful so that the fertilization will be successful in males when the males sweat in the axillary region armpits they secrete release pheromones and this will attract the females so these are some examples for human pheromones thank you so with this we have completed the chapter on pheromones so we did uh, the introduction for pheromones the different types of pheromones and some examples of insects and vertebrates uh, we have uh, studied the different aspects if you have got any doubts you can get it clarified thank you students